Hello everybody, today we're going to look at 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was directed by Dan Trachtenberg and is kinda sort of a spiritual sequel to Cloverfield, but not really. The story follows a woman named Michelle who has just left her boyfriend and is accidentally run off the road, and when she wakes up, she finds herself trapped in this underground bunker with a couple of strangers. There's one dude named Emmett with a broken arm, and another guy named Howard who is some crazy conspiracy theorist nutjob. And this nutjob tells her there's been some kind of attack and everyone above ground is dead, or very nearly about to be, and he's not sure exactly what sort of attack it was, chemical, nuclear, whatever, or who carried it out. It could have been the Russians, or the Chinese, or the North Koreans, or maybe Maybe the Martians have finally invaded. Yeah, really. And now Michelle has to find a way to survive underground with this lunatic for the foreseeable future, wondering if he might snap at any moment, and pondering if it might be better to try to escape and take a chance out in the open world, or if she should just stay underground and wait it out and hope for the best. So before I talk about 10 Cloverfield Lane, I guess I should tell you what I thought of the original Cloverfield, since this is kind of, sort of, but not really a sequel. Um, I liked it. I thought it had a pretty good story. I liked the monster. I thought the found footage aspect worked pretty well for that story. Uh, probably not a movie that would be anywhere near as successful today, since the found footage genre has been kind of played out, but it came along at the right time. Uh, had some issues with the characters. I thought some of them were kind of stupid and had a tendency to make some very poor decisions, but otherwise I thought it was a decent movie. And as for 10 Cloverfield Lane, which as I've said is kind of sort of a sequel, but not really, this is kind of a spoiler, but I think it's one that everyone should hear. This has absolutely nothing to do with the original Cloverfield apart from the title. I don't even know why they put Cloverfield in the title of this movie, unless there's some little Easter egg I missed that connects these two movies, which is possible, I admit, but as far as I can tell, there is no connection at all apart from that one word in the title. Now, I don't know if they're trying to do some kind of anthology series where a bunch of movies have a similar title, but otherwise they're completely different stories, kind of like what they were trying to do with Halloween back in the day, although that didn't work out so well for them as I recall, but uh, maybe they'll have better luck with this. In any case, just judging 10 Cloverfield Lane as a movie and not part of a series, I thought it was really damn good. The story is very suspenseful pretty much throughout the entire runtime. We spend almost the entire movie just trapped in this very claustrophobic environment, and right off the bat, Michelle finds herself trapped in this place with these two strangers, one of whom is going on about Russians and Martians and all this other shit, and he's the one with the gun. And if that don't make you shit yourself, I don't know what will. And for a while, the movie does a pretty good job of keeping you guessing whether Howard is actually telling the truth about all this. I mean, even if we disregard any possibility of aliens, because that would just be silly, was there actually an attack of some sort? And if so, was it really as bad as he says it was? Is everyone up there really dead or dying? Is it too dangerous to go outside? Or is he just making the whole thing up? Or even if he's not deliberately lying about all of this, is it just some paranoid delusion going on in his head because the guy is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? And eventually they do answer the question. They answer little bits of it at a time anyway. But even then, the suspense really does not let up. The dialogue is really well done. And while there is a lot of suspense in this movie, there are little bits of comic relief here and there that I thought worked very well. I didn't find it took me out of the story at all. And the score was very good. I was hooked on that music from the beginning. And I kept thinking to myself, man, this sounds really familiar. Not the actual tune necessarily, but just the style, I couldn't quite place it until I got home and looked it up and realized it was Bear McCreary. Which surprised me because he's he's done a few movies before, but he's mainly known for doing television shows like The Walking Dead, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Battlestar Galactica. But yeah, I thought he did a really good job with the score. 
Almost all of the movie is spent with just these three principal characters, and fortunately, the actors all do an excellent job with the roles. I like John Gallagher Jr. as Emmett. I really liked Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Michelle, who's basically the big heroine of this movie. And unlike some characters in the original Cloverfield, I liked how these two are both very intelligent and their actions actually make sense. I can't really say the same thing for Howard, who's played by John Goodman, but... That actually works here because his character is crazy. He's not supposed to make sense. And man, Goodman did a great job with this. This is easily one of the best roles I've seen him in and certainly the scariest. And without giving anything away regarding the ending, I will say I did not expect them to take it in that direction. Holy shit. I mean, looking back on the movie, I kind of thought, well... Yeah, of course they went in that direction, but at the time, it was a pretty big surprise. They, they really did a good job on that one. And the ending also leaves the door open for a possible sequel, which, honestly, I would like to see. I'm kind of curious where they would go with this one. In the end, it's a very solid thriller with some great performances, and I would definitely recommend this one. It's well worth the price of admission. And if you haven't seen the original Cloverfield... That's okay, because like I said, there's really no connection between the two movies apart from the title. And if you did see the original Cloverfield and did not like it, I wouldn't necessarily let that keep you from seeing this one, because it is a very different story. And that about wraps it up for 10 Cloverfield Lane. So until next time, take care.